Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at Scully for the Nintendo Switch. This one it's promising a story about warring gods as you basically roll around a clay-like world, but can its gameplay live up to its story's originality? Well first of all, look, I want to say a quick thank you to all of you for helping get the channel to 10,000 subscribers. It's crazy to me, but I absolutely appreciate it. And then of course, like everyone who's not subscribed, consider it if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family. And yeah, let's get started. So Story and Scully, for a game that is essentially rolling a marble around locations, delivered more on the story front than I expected. Here you're going to be controlling Scully, a school that washes up on shore that gets reanimated thanks to a local deity that goes by the name of Terry. Why would Terry do this? So you can intervene in a war between Terry's three siblings. It's simple for sure, but it proves for some like honestly like fun moments and Terry's dialogue especially is entertaining. There's like this weird sense of humour to it all that absolutely appealed to me. Story though for the most part it's told via the occasional cutscene and then there's voiceovers as you play that really I gotta say does a good job of just confirming you're heading in the right direction. It's like I said simple stuff but given the context of this location, this world, it actually works really well and I'm all for a game that gives me like a reason behind the madness so yeah basically consider me impressed. Gameplay then, and this is basically, you know, like Marble Madness or the Morph Ball moments from Metroid. Your age there pretty much determines which you would recognise first, honestly. But both are a pretty good summary. Some might even see Monkey Ball, one of my favourite games growing up, and I can see it myself, but do know you don't control the world itself here as you would there. Here's the basic idea though, roll around a scully and find that next exit to take you to the next location. So while watching this video it may seem that this is giving you, you know, like open locations to explore and that is kind of true, but me I'd describe it more as like a linear experience with the occasional open area so you can figure out where your next direction is, it's almost like a puzzle. Controls though they are simple enough, you've got roll, jump and then you save at checkpoints that are essentially like pools of mud in these locations. The aim get through the level and avoid water at all costs because you are made of clay and that will basically wash you away before you know it and you're going to be thrown back to that last checkpoint. Gotta say here those checkpoints can be like borderline and annoyingly far apart. To break up all this marble madness though you'll also gain the ability to transform yourself or at least I'd say like take control of like free human like rock characters each that come with their own perks. They offer different skills though like the ability to punch through large rock formations, more flexible movement and then even what can only be described as super speed and telekinetic powers as you literally will like lift rocks and build your own walkway. They slow down the pace of the game from all the fast you know speed maneuverability Scully provides but it absolutely works and it will be essential to your progress. Perhaps for me the smartest decision of the whole game though was to give you the freedom to freely choose between like just the skull or the character you can basically jump in and out whenever you like. The only restriction is the initial transformation that must like happen at a checkpoint. The controls though, like I said, they feel really good, especially as Scully, there's some really smooth controls here that just feel great. I always felt like this one was ultra responsive and that's important because in the latter part of the game you're going to be expected to deliver on some like precise jumps thanks to like some challenging platforming and then to avoid enemies as well. These enemies they start you know simple enough but as would be expected the further you get in the more complicated they get but also you'll see that count of them on screen skyrocket. This I've got to say though leads unfortunately to my first complaint. When the game works it really works but the frame rate issues are unfortunately relatively frequent. When I say frequent though, I want to clarify, never consistent but when enemy count increases or you use like a wall climb ability or even towards the like latter half of the game like just rotating the camera it does cause issues. You are given free movement of that camera by the way but the game 
definitely chokes just a little bit as you can see in the footage here I'm dropping as low as like 23 24 frames per second it's a case here of the opening couple of hours of the game are relatively stable but the more busy the screen gets the more noticeable the frame rate gets it's not a huge problem honestly once you get used to it but you'll absolutely notice it because like 85% of it is nearly locked out at 30 frames per second so the second it happens you just instantly feel it this footage though, I will say we are at least a couple of hours deep into gameplay if they could get this locked out in a future patch it would be ideal because it just kind of breaks I've got to say that the overall flow of the entire experience so my next big issue then it's boss fights and while they may sound like a good idea on paper they struggle to really like work alongside the gameplay formula it's kind of the same with ladder like monkey ball titles and that's kind of how I feel about this one as well it's not what it expects from you that's the problem like for example an early one you're running away from a tidal wave but for some reason they've decided in these moments to take away control of the camera meaning it's basically locked and you either like lose track of your location or just can't see what's coming up what overall feels like a very fine-tuned control scheme that's never like look based honestly here just stumbles you know how can you expect me to navigate that next jump when I can't see it Overall, the core gameplay is fun, but I'll tell you now it's repetitive with you essentially navigating these linear like mazes that open up occasionally with the ability to transform and figure out very basic puzzles. What you get at the very beginning of the game does very little to evolve outside of introduce the occasional new character to control. Sadly though, gameplay for me was let down by checkpoints that can be a little too far apart, bosses that take the precision out of the gameplay, and then finally that frame rate that is just super noticeable given how smooth it feels for the majority of the time. So graphically speaking, I'm not sure on this one. The core gameplay is nice enough if you see it running elsewhere, but on the Switch, it's all a little kind of like soft and blurred for my liking. The environments are no doubt interesting to explore as you'll see them gradually shift through a variety of like styles and seasons, but there's a very low texture detail to it all that is pretty like clear from the footage I'm showing you. This was especially true for me with the water, honestly. It plays such a big part to the core game as that's basically like your, you know, your arch nemesis but here exploding enemies shots of water tidal waves it feels extremely disconnected from the game world itself you're also going to notice quite a bit of pixelation especially when it comes to like the shadows in this world that said look there is no doubt moments of beauty here with some of these like open vistas the, you know there's no doubt these have been well crafted it feels natural to the environment you're within i really liked as well the transformation effects too as you're shifting a clay puddle into one of your characters the weirdest design decision for me though was the occasional cutscenes they went for like this stop motion vibe which does no doubt make sense you know you're made of clay so claymation but it's a little too stop and start in the sense there's not like enough frames to it all and it makes it feel like almost still images for the most part and not really delivering on the intended impact they also i gotta say don't fit well against the occasional bus animation where it just randomly switches to full-on cgi cutscenes which actually caught me off guard for me they've got to choose which one they're going for and put a little bit more into one of them the idea with claymation i like but a little extra attention definitely would have helped thankfully though that all said the character models in these moments are great and i really enjoyed meeting like the local life that lives on this island even if it is like a very tiny cast here graphics look you can see the good here and on other platforms it does i've got to say look really nice even if at times a little kind of generic but here on the switch it's impacted with a downgrade and that frame rate we talked about earlier i just struggled to get over handheld wise though i will say as a final note does sharpen things up quite a bit at least if that's the way you prefer to play but i will say i had to actually turn the brightness up just a tiny bit because it was a little dark on the automatic settings so audio then are no problems honestly it's a case of it does enough without breaking any ground or anything else the music it is suitably you know light-hearted that matches kind of the tone of this world but it also helps when you get frustrated and then the occasional sound effect again fine if a little if i would say like underpowered at times for example like punches against walls exploding enemies for me they could have had just a tiny bit more weight behind them 
If there's one thing I really liked with this game though, it's the voice acting. All of it here is voice acting, which works perfectly. But I gotta say, when it comes to a voice matching the way the character looks, they absolutely nailed it, especially Terry, the main like god here. I was really impressed with the voice acting and it does a lot to add to the experience. Overall, Scully is a fun if repetitive game. If you like the idea of like puzzle exploration adventure, then you can do a lot worse. Not that I can name many that involve a rolling skull on the Switch. Sadly though, I will say what you get at the beginning of the game is near identical to the end. When it comes to the precision moments of platforming, these are great. But towards the end, I gotta admit, I got a little bit bored with the whole idea of like a linear like path and then the occasional large open location. I think for me, this is one of those experiences you enjoy slowly, you know, an hour here, an hour there, and not necessarily in big long sittings. That said, my real issues with this one, the noticeable graphical downgrade that makes it feel kind of bland, honestly, a lack of a sense of progression, think like enemy types and, you know, characters that never really change. And then the big one, the frame rate. I'm not one of those people that absolutely must have a perfect frame rate, honestly, but here you just feel it and see it immediately because it jumps from like super, super smooth to this very slight stutter. I gotta say as well, this is a real problem when you're making your way through, you know, precision jumps. And to me, fighting against the game's build is never a good thing. Today I'm giving Scully on the Nintendo Switch an above average six out of 10. So look, with that, a quick shout out then to the patrons who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It truly is appreciated. And thank you all so much. If you wanna check that out for yourself, I've linked it in the video description below. Then if you are new here, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.